Welcome back to Righteous Rock TV. I'm your host, TJ Rocker. We're here with Joe Ross from Lineheart. Right on. It's great to see you again. Uh, I know uh, we uh, first met uh, in May at the Righteous Rock Revival. You came out and rocked out with uh, eight other bands. Uh, it was a good time. I hope you had a good time. Uh, I, was, uh, I was excited and I had a really good time with this. Right on. So what are you working on now as far as Lineheart? Um, right now, as far as Lineheart is concerned, uh, we are right now going to be um, re redoing some of our material. Um, I was able to come across a producer who kind of thought like-minded. He's a Christian brother, and I'll refer to him by a pastor. Um, Frederick, like one and because Frederick. of that, you know, when, when we decided to kind of take a sample with him, in part, he used just some equipment with drums and some of his, some of the pre record stuff. And when he started to come up with it and start doing certain sounds to it, which I was looking for, my mind was like, wow, this, this guy is hearing what I'm hearing. And, and um, I think in January, we're thinking about um, starting up with him. You know, and like I said, I'm really excited about what's Part of it, and, uh, and like I said, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll give it more teeth. Cool, cool. Yeah. By, by the way, we're at Guitar Center here uh, in Town Square in Las Vegas, Nevada. So uh, that's why you're hearing the phones ring and uh, people being paid. Uh, this place is just hopping and and busy. Uh, what kind of guitar you got there? Um, I got uh, they call a Schecter um, Damon Elite Eight String. Um, probably many of you have probably come to know me by now as far as being able to see. You know, some pictures of the line or if you or if you've never been on Lionheart or before go on Lionheart L Y O N H A R T. Um, any of our websites and you look at the pictures, a lot of time I'm gonna be playing the seventh string. Well this year I decided to up the ante a little bit and go with an eighth string. Um, for me it was been like a, like like a challenge. Another one of the comes up saying, you know what, I really wanted to be more versatile and more uh, as far as being able to hear more things or look like it goes to the street. Um, I got one, I got, I got what they call the, the Toyota version of, of a Schechter, which is the old man's um, I got that one on its way. So, um, and that's going to be used in the new recordings. And, you know, so, I'm, so when I started playing with you, I, I you know, started messing with certain tunes and stuff like that. Um, with this guitar allowed me to go back to standard tuning, but at the same time still do the drop. Uh, Drop the uh, string thing, where um, now with, with certain songs I can still be able to utilize a lot of stuff that I couldn't do with my seven string. My seven string is um, tuned down a step, but um, but you know, in spite of all that, you know, it, it's a lot. It still you know plays pretty much like a regular guitar. Uh, a lot of people when they see me, like he's going eight string, like dang, he's crazy, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, but it's it's not about you know it's not it's not about how many strings you have. It's it's what you can use. And I always had this way of being, you know, being tuned to listen to certain things. It's hard. A lot of it is because, you know, I, you know, we came up in the 80s, you know, big striper and stuff like that. At the time, you know, you had guitar hero. And you kind of grew up on that, and you know, on that, and you that stuff. And because of that, it's allowed me to be able to be more, what uh, they call it, adventurous on different types of instruments. Cool, cool. So, uh, when, uh, what's the websites and how can people uh, hear your music? Okay, um, you can go to L Y O N H A R T. You can, we're on Google, you can Google us up. Uh, we have a Facebook page, we have a Reverb Nation page. We even have our own web page, which, is ha which has the funky spelling, which is the L Y O N H A R T. The music is spelled like this, so it's all one word L Y O N H A R T. M U S C. I C K. Um, now, a lot of people ask me, well, why, why do you kind of spell music like that? Well, a lot of it is because I, 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 I um, uh, most, most people, I still read the old thing, the Bible. Um, I've stuck with it, and it's something that's kind of been the inspiration of how I write and how I feel. Um, so, so when, 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 you go to, when you go to our website, you go to sample our music, being able to, uh, you know, being able to see also being able to sign up and be able to see what we have got going on. Are you, are you going to remaster um, uh, Let Me Die? Um, we're probably going to remaster it just a little bit. We're yeah. Not, we're not going to, like I said, we're not going to really change it all. We're just going to kind of just sharpen, sharpen the sound up a little bit more. Um, like I said, there's, you know, there's certain drum sounds I'm listening for and, and stuff like that. It's just, I want, like I said, I want to make it more, more totally industrial sounding. That is, that is needed. 
Very cool, very cool. Yeah, that's why we love uh, what you do, man, because uh, there's not many Christian industrial uh, uh, bands out there, uh, and we, we dig it. Uh, we dig what you're bringing to the, you know, the table. You know, TJ, I was, uh, had some respect sports, sports people were over me, and one thing they mentioned about me is that you're a thinker outside the box. Um, I don't take any credit for that. They think there's a lot of times that I've always had an imagination, but a lot of times I just let God do what he wants me to do. And like I tell a lot of people, when, especially when Blackheart first started coming out and the music started being produced, a lot of people were not really keen to it, or they were kind of like, they kind of like, okay, you know, Joe's got a good thing going, but we don't know. Um, I, I believe when I, when I pray and seek God through the music that he wants me to write, I believe it's going to prevail. And, and the good evidence of that was back in uh, 2004, if I'm correct, uh, when I finally had my band together and we were finally starting to play with the original lineup. Uh, which, anyways, um, a lot of people, they heard my music, they liked it, and they were really, they really were fond of it because of, because of what, the way it was produced and it was projected. And when it, and when it came to, uh, and when, and when it came to, uh, what they would say when they came to listen to the other bands, like all these screamo bands and stuff like that, they have they asked me one question, and what's that question? They said, Joe, do you understand that the music of what they're playing? And I'll, I'll admit I was kind of embarrassed to answer that question. So that confirmed to me that this is what God wants. This is what God wants. Uh, he wants me to produce music that people can listen to because. When I was growing up as a Christian, you know, coming up in Striper, Petra, and, you know, good old DeGarmo and, you know, yeah, and Blood all, Good and White Cross, yes, I mean, the, all the, the list goes on and on and on. And on. You know, they, they, they were very clear on the message, especially Baron yeah. Cross. You know, they were very clear on the message, and, and I believe God made one of these to make sure that that, that, that continued to resonate every time we played my art music. And people have been touched, and, and our music has been a vehicle to be able to open up doors, even at secular venues play because it's because of Stripe, but that's why, you know, they, because of what they did, that's what we're on now today. Yeah, we play, and again, we play all those bands on Righteous Rock uh, TV. We know a lot of those bands. We know the whole Striper uh, family. We know uh, Blood Good, obviously, you've heard. Uh, if you go to our um, uh, YouTube channel, Righteous Rock TV, uh, you'll be able to hear Michael Blood Good um, uh, do a nice 20 minute uh, audio interview for us, which is which is awesome. You know, that he took the time and uh, Again, we appreciate it, Joe, uh, you taking this time out. Uh, coming from California, you're visiting the family, yeah, which is cool. Yeah. And we were able to come out and, uh, and meet up with you here. Again, thank you to Guitar Center here in uh, Town Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, for uh, letting us, uh, Town Square, I guess it is, Town Square in Las Vegas, Nevada, for uh, letting us uh, you know, do this interview. We're in this really super cool room uh, with these guitars hanging up all around us. Uh, some of them are... Uh, are uh, way out of my price range, but uh, yeah. considering I just started playing guitar, so I, I have an Epiphone uh, Les Paul uh, 100, uh, which is cool. It's got the Sunburst body, so you know, that looks um, kind of rough. You know, I tell a lot of people this. When you start out buying guitars, it doesn't matter. I own Epiphones and, and, and Squires. Um, that's aside my Jacksons. Um, you know, like uh, like I have, I recently acquired what they call a, 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 a Dot Studio, which I had something similar to that years ago. And it's a hollow body, and it just plays beautifully. And my Strat is just, you know, an, an awesome thing to have, also along with my Telecaster. You know, so it doesn't matter what guitar you kind of get; you can actually create it into something, make it sound. And and uh, like I would explain to a lot of people, a guitar is an extension of who you are. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that too from a lot of your peers. Uh, I've heard somebody say, "Well, you know, you never know." what you're going to sound like and so you start playing. Right. Learning how to play because everyone's got their, even though the guitar is tuned the same, uh, everyone sounds differently.